Hello, Paul T here again. Uh, this will be the second ever video that I have uh, posted. And today we will be talking about cryptocurrencies and in, in particular about Bitcoin. And so before we get into that, let's first of all understand what Bitcoin is and why it, the technology of blockchain, which is what uh, is so revolutionary about Bitcoin, will change the financial services industry forever. And it is a game-changing technology. Um, banking as we know it will be changing and we will go digital. And, and so let's, let's sort of discuss what it is about Bitcoin that makes it so popular, why it's going up in price, but why eventually it must fail. Or it's my prediction. I guess first of all, um, there are, are, you need to understand what the blockchain is. And basically it's a distributed ledger. What that means is information about a transaction is kept on the internet at various secure servers, you know, like uh, all across the world, it can be anywhere. And in order for a transaction to be verified, uh, the information has to go through many servers, not just a couple of servers, maybe up to as many as 30 servers. And since the internet, uh, the, the speeds are so quick, uh, you cannot hack just one server because if you hack the information on one server, the information that it tries to verify with all the servers will be incompatible and therefore that one hacked uh, server with invalid information won't pass muster with the other servers and therefore it's disregarded, right? And so the blockchain retains its integrity and unless you're able to hack like all the different servers within like, within a second or two, right? Which is impossible, um, then the blockchain will preserve its integrity. Um, but, but anyway, um, going back to Bitcoin, what, it is, what is it about Bitcoin that uh, leads me to predict its failure? Okay, so first of all, um, the blockchain is a revolutionary technology, no doubt, and, and Bitcoin was the very first. And so right now, it's, we're at the very beginning of the blockchain technology. Uh, we don't really have a lot of applications for it yet. And so we're sort of still in the early adoption phase. But the thing about Bitcoin is it is extremely popular and it is seen as a digital currency. Now, blockchains don't necessarily just have to be a digital currency. They, are, they can be much more, right? Uh, if you have heard of Ethereum, uh, that is the second largest market cap worldwide of any of the blockchains, um, you know, the tokens, tokenization of the blockchain technology. And they do things other than just be a digital currency. Actually, their idea is smart contracts, smart contracts being built into the blockchain. So for example, with real estate transactions, you are able to upload documentation into the blockchain itself. So for example, with the real estate transactions, uh, you have titles to property. So when you buy and sell real estate, uh, the title has to pass and the titles can actually be uploaded into the Ethereum blockchain and so when you buy and sell property, it becomes a permanent part of the blockchain. So it's a permanent record and you can look back at the different transactions uh, and see that it's legitimate, right? And there are certain rules for what allows the blockchain to be altered. Um, it's smart contract technology. It is baked into the code on, upon which Ethereum has been created. Right, so, so again, Bitcoin is the very first blockchain technology, but it was built in a rudimentary fashion 
uh, doesn't have all the bells and whistles of Ethereum. Uh, but uh, the, the main thing that I think when people are looking at blockchain technology is for it to be a digital currency. Ethereum is not built to be a digital currency. It, is, it provides other functionality, which I believe is the future of financial transactions. But if we are talking about a digital currency, Ethereum is not going to be the answer either. And the reason is transactions per second. Right now we have credit cards, like Visa can do, you know, thousands of transactions per second. Bitcoin, I think, can only do four or five. I mean, there's a, a big Bitcoin fork coming up called Segwit, and I don't know how many transactions per second that it will boost it to, but even if it doubles it, big deal, right? If you're doing a dozen transactions per second, that's still not enough to allow it to become a digital currency. Because remember, right now, not many people have heard of Bitcoin and it is not being used abundantly as a currency, a digital currency. Um, so, uh, in order for a digital currency to succeed, it does need to be able to handle the volume of transactions that a digital currency would be required to handle. There's already one digital currency right now that has already been created that can clock over 4,000 transactions per second. Okay? Now there are other uh, ICOs or, or digital currency projects that, that even exist right now that have the goal of reaching 4,000 transactions per second, but there's already one uh, digital currency that's already achieved that milestone. It's already been demonstrated, and this is the one that I think is going to be a winner. Okay. So I'll be doing another video log to tell you what that particular digital currency, that uh, token, what the name of that is, if you don't know already. But uh, again, uh, just to summarize, Bitcoin is not going to be the global digital currency that everyone hopes it's going to be. It pioneered the, the blockchain technology, which is fantastic. It will always be in the record books for that. But it is not the future of digital currencies. That's my opinion. I give you my reasons for that opinion. And hopefully you will tune in to the next video log that I will be doing on cryptocurrencies to find out the name of the cryptocurrency that I believe has the blockchain technology that will turn it into the new global digital currency and fulfill the promise of being a digital currency. Thank you.